Hi, Max Hardcore here. The movie you're about to see contains sexually active couples doing what they enjoy. That is, having sex and getting filmed while doing it. But remember, be nice. Never use force to get what you want, especially with women. All the performers in my movies are at least 18 years of age and have been tested for the HIV virus. The names have been changed to protect the innocent, of course. And don't try these stunts at home. You know, thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, in previous ones, we have discussed on the adult industry, the porn industry, the war on porn. Um, there are different extremes in the porn industry, uh, from the most mild uh, or uh, what we call non-rated non type porn, which basically isn't that much. Uh, there's sex, but it's not to the extreme. It's something you would see on Cinemax. Uh, to the most extreme, uh, which this is what we're going to discuss uh, today. Uh, if you're not familiar with Paul Little, we're going to have a bit of a discussion as Paul Little has passed away this past week at the age of 66. And if you've not heard of him before, you can look him up. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you a fair warning, uh, once you open up that, that uh, Pandora's box, you could never close it again. But before we start, thank you for those who have subscribed, like, share, clicking on this video. We really do appreciate that. We're just here about uh, under 30 before we get to 700. Hopefully we will get there. I mean, it is, uh, we're going into April, Easter week. Uh, so hopefully we'll get there soon uh, on the other um, social media platforms. Uh, we're about 200 to bit shoot and we're still uh, Odyssey and Rumble. We're still building an audience there. But I thank you all those uh, who have been with us on this uh, extravagant journey, as you could say, with the videos that we put on uh, these particular um shows like Man Man with Show, Man Man Cafe, and now that we have the Fast Five. So Paul Little, if you're not familiar with him, uh, he basically he goes by the nom de pure uh, Max Hardcore. Now, <laughs> if you've heard that name before and you know what we are going to be talking about, yes, Max Hardcore has passed away at age 66. Uh, this is a man, you know, when you talk about people that are on the crosshairs of the United States government, when it comes to obscenity, uh, Max Hardcore has been, um, number one on the most wanted list, uh, especially during the Bush era administration. Uh, if he, most of his, um, Actually, pretty much all of his videos uh, generally are of, oh boy, how can we put this to the situation? I mean, people call it gonzo and fetish porn, but there's a lot of, uh, oh, how are you saying, uh, inserting things that are not supposed to go in certain places, vomiting, uh mucus you know a lot of stuff that you know uh you should never see in it unless you're watching a horror film uh some things you don't want to see in a porn movie but like i said in the in the adult business or you know mostly the entertainment business uh there's always something for everybody on there and i guess there are people out there that did enjoy uh, this classification of porn but the other half of it is that a lot of the models uh, that were or porn stars that were on his videos dressed up as young girls they weren't underage as far as I know uh, but uh, basically they were uh, dressed up in that, and basically that was one of the things they slammed on him. But we're going to read this off of XBiz first. 
and then we'll go over a little bit of his career. Controversial director, producer, performer Max Har Hardcore passed away in Los Angeles. Industry friends and associates reported he was 66. The gonzo and fetish porn pioneer re reportedly suffered an infection and organ failure follow following chemotherapy treatment for thyroid cancer. With over 500 performer credits and 300 director credits listed in the IFD, Hardcore was recognizable figure at industry events rarely seen without his signature cowboy hat an active social media user hardcore has spent most of his convalescence promoting his archive through content through his pay site maxhardcore.com during one of those prom uh during one of the most prominent george w bush uh at era attacks on free speech hardcore was the subject of a high profile case when a Florida federal jury indicted him for disturb, distributing upset, obscene material through the mail and online. Hardcore was convicted in the federal court for violating U.S. obscenity laws. Five of his titles came under scrutiny, including Golden Guzzlers and Fist of Fury. And we are not talking about Bruce Lee at that point. Hardcore <laughs> alleged these releases were intended for distribution in Europe, not in, in not the U.S., but the mail order company he began using, s selling them in the U.S., which compromised him. I didn't monitor the situation strong enough, he told XBiz upon release. Uh, the money was rolling in, the girls were hot, the cars were fast, the booze never ran out, I just went with it. That was my mistake. I thought that if the mail order company was selling them and not me, I was protected. He was sentenced to 46 months and 30 months of his sentence in Texas, Texas federal prison from 2009 until 2011. No man deserves four year in prison because 12 people didn't like his movie, Hardcore said, but I've accepted it and come to terms with it. I never want to forget the experience because it is an important part of my life and turning point for me and the industry. Hardcore propensity for extreme content and his unapologetic defense of his onset behavior created it. Also made him a common target of anti-porn crusaders who to this day continue to miscategorize his uh, decidedly fringe output and practices as typical of the entire adult industry. And this is correct on there. This is not what the adult industry has in it. Hardcore is way out of range on this. Justifying his work, Hardcore pointed at accusing Finger right back at the society that demonized them. Society has spoken and they demanded it. He said in 2009, there's more people buying my videos than, than people protesting my videos when I was put in federal trial in Tampa, Florida. Uh, there were no protesters, there were no picketers, there were no people angrily denouncing me as I came in and left the courtroom. And that's correct. I, it's, you know, this was just literally, they were trying to take down the porn industry uh, and using Max Hardcore as the evidence to the situation. Now, like I said, this is not something I would watch. There are those out there that love, uh, Europe loves his stuff. So, you know, he, he has a big fan base overseas. They just love this shit. He does have a fan base here as well. Now, the thing about it is, and, you know, most people say like, well, you know, how, you know, we have the Miller's test. We have this. Well, unfortunately, it's a with his stuff is a very fine line on the Miller's test. And this is this is why he ended up getting guilty because basically, and it was depending on the judge. He could have won it under the Miller's test, and not in bo in both directions because it was just just one step over, and it was only five, only just five videos, only five different movies that basically that they were prosecuting against us. And he is right; it was only a small group of people, and you know it happens to be part of it happens to be morality and media. You know that they were behind part of this. But I'm going to read a little bit off of his story here. And we got this online. We'll go over it just a little bit. And this is about his prosecution and uh, before 
sentenced in prison. This will give you a little detail of what had happened. Uh, based on Max Extreme 4, the city of Los Angeles in 1998 charged him with child pornography and distributing of obscenity. The actress was of the age of 18, was not disputed. The charges were brought because the actress was portraying a character who was underage. Just before the case was brought to trial in 2002, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Ashcroft versus a Free Speech Coalition that the statute prohibited prohibiting adults from portraying children in film and books was unconstitutional. Based on this ruling, the child pornography charges against Little were dismissed. The misdemeanor charge of distributing obscenity was retained, uh, but the jury failed to reach a verdict. Uh, additional obscenity charges were subsequently le levied against him the LA, by L.A. again, resulting in a hung jury. Little com commented after the trial, and I, it, said I was, it was a frivolous waste of public resources. Then on uh, October 5th, 2005, Little was in Barcelona attending the federal FICIB erotic expos. Uh, the offices of Max World Entertainment was raided by the FBI. Five video titles and the office computer servers were seized. Obscenity for a research toward the federal obscenity indictment charge uh, of a related to record keeping law 18 USC 2257. After the FBI raid, Little released the following statement. Once again, the government is wasting tax dollars on otherwise invaluable law enforcement resources trying to force a minority view of morality on all of America. Five of my movies have been targeted by the federal prude patrol which that's true. There is no indication of any crime to be alleged except obscenity. If indicted, I will fight to protect my liberty as well as uh, the liberty of consenting adults to watch other adults engage in lawful, consensual, pleasurable sexual action. Uh, shame on the Bush, Bush Department of Justice. I am proud of the movies I make and I'm proud of those who buy and sell those movies. Then in 2007, Little and his company, Max Weld, again, were indicted by F Florida in Florida by the United States Department of Justice Child Exploitation and Obscenity Section uh, with five counts of transporting obscene material by the use of an interactive computer services and five counts of mailing obscene matter relating to five movies uh, showing fisting, urination, and vomiting. <laughs> Little was subs subsequently found guilty on all charges and sentenced to 46 months in prison on appeal. Uh, the 11th Court Circuit in Atlanta, Georgia upheld the convention ruling that the materials published online can be, can be judged by local community standards in Florida, even those hardcore didn't live there or produce the materials there. Little began serving his sentence in January of 2009. Uh, the jury ordered the internet domain, www.markshardhardcar.com to be forfeited, but but declined to forfeit Little's house in Alina, California. Little was uh, originally assigned to the Federal uh, Corrections Facility in downtown Los Angeles, then transferred to the, to the institution in La Tuna in Anthony, Texas, a low security uh, facility for men. He served five final five months of his sentence under house arrest. Now, a lot of, a lot of those who say out there that, you know, he got railroaded, and yeah, he did get railroaded on the certain things they want to use that because you could fight and talk about uh, vomiting, urination. I mean, the other one, fisting, you can't really say on that, but you could find people urinating in regular films, vomiting in regular films. Um, you know, to be prosecuted for that. Okay, yeah, it was disgusting. Yeah, it's not something. Where, but the thing about it is, not everybody is watching that. This is not something that was broadcast on national television. This is something that was sold, and some of it was on the internet. Understandably, at this time, the you know, this was the two thousand, the early two thousand, the first ten years of the two thousands actually, and you you could say that the internet was still fairly new 
you know, here in 2023, I think it would have went differently. I think it would have went differently to the situation on there. But, you know, this is people that are out there that are wanting to shut down the adult industry. And, you know, they're going to pick and choose the worst of the worst. And this is what they say. This is what you're going to see. This is all, all over the adult industry. No, it's not the, the entire adult industry on there. You know, we could go flash over to Candina Royale in her movies. And her films are more toward the feminist and more romantic of the of the films themselves. They're not grotesque in any way and all that. It's showing two people in love. Okay? This is this is what her films were. When you go over to Max Headroom, his films are just to the extreme. Uh girls dressed up like schoolgirls. Uh, you know, putting things, like I said, putting things where it shouldn't be doing, throwing up, urinating, uh, the, the most extreme that you would hear sometimes, it, you know, that people would talk about online saying, oh my God, they have this, that, and the other thing. But that's not the entire industry. And that's what he for. I mean, you could compare in a way, Max Hardcore, Paul Little, to like Larry Flint, what Larry Flint went through his trials uh, in the industry as far as uh, what happened. And um, when it comes down to it, it's just basically another bunch of Puritans who just doesn't like everything. And, and let me tell you something. God forbid if they ever get rid of the adult industry, the porn industry, guess what? They're going to go after everything else. Do you understand? This is why we have the Miller's test. This is why we have uh, our constitution, you know, the freedom of expression that we can do in this country. Other countries all have already taken away a lot of these expression. This is what, you know, basically the socialists, the communists um, do when it comes down to it. We've seen it in the second world war. We've seen, you know, we've seen it afterwards as well in some of these countries. And we've seen it today. When you hear someone says, well, they've banned anime and manga in Australia on certain titles or in Russia or, you know, or in any other country that on there because they said, well, you know, cartoons are making our, you know, our kids commit suicide. Says, no, it's not. We have a mental issue in this in this world right now. But we won't acknowledge it, you know. That's the problem with the situation that's been going on. We're not going to go through, you know, on there. We're going to leave that for another episode. But, you know, when you have someone that's in the crosshairs, then, you know, it's like a lot of other people that have been in the crosshairs of the federal government on both sides of the aisle when it comes to freedom of speech. So rest in peace, mess hardcore, Paul Little. Uh, you know, I, I would assume his company will go on. Uh, it's probably his stuff will become uh, more valuable. Probably the price will go up on there. Uh, so tell me in the comments below, have you seen a Max Hardcore? Uh, I wouldn't recommend, if you're, if you're screamish or anything, that you're, I wouldn't recommend it. Like I said, it's not something that I would watch. So don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for clicking on this, and bye-bye now.